Hello fellow programmer. My name is Jacob and I want to introduce you to Game Theory. Let's do this by examining a game. Mario and Luigi have a pile of 9 blocks. And this is how the game works. Mario and Luigi take turns making moves. A move consists of taking 2 or 3 blocks from the pile. And the first player that is unable to make any move loses. Let's see the game in action. Mario starts. He removes the top 2 blocks. This reduces the pile to 7 blocks. Now it is Luigi's turn. He removes two blocks as well, which leaves five blocks for Mario. Mario removes three blocks, leaving two, and Luigi takes the last two blocks. Now it would be Mario's turn, but now the pile is empty and he cannot perform any moves and loses the game. What we want to find out is the following. Is there an optimal strategy for the game? And if so, what is it? Could he have also won the game when Luigi played optimally? To answer this, I want to define a certain category of games, namely the impartial combinatorial games. These are the conditions for impartial combinatorial games. There are two players. There is a set of possible states of the game. Basically, each position, each, each arrangement of the board, the pile, and so on is a state. The rules define for each state a set of legal moves. Both players have the same legal moves at each state, so the set of moves doesn't depend on the player. The players take turn, and the game ends when a terminal state is reached. A terminal state is a state without any moves. And the next player to move loses. Let's quickly check if Mario and Luigi's game is an impartial combinatorial game. We have two players, Mario and Luigi. We have 10 game states, the empty pile, the pile of height 1, the pile of height 2, and so on until the pile of height 9. We have defined the moves for each state. The pile of height 0 has no moves, so does the pile of height 1, but the pile of height 2 has one move. We move two blocks, or change the height to height 0. The pile of height 3 has two possible moves, to change the pile into a pile of height 0 or of height 1, and so on. Mario and Luigi take turns. And our game ends when either player reaches a terminal state. The terminal states for our game is the empty pile or the pile with one block. From both states we cannot remove two or three blocks. As it turns out, every impartial combinatorial game has an optimal strategy. To, get, to compute the optimal strategy, we have to define winning states and losing states. A state is a winning state if the current player is guaranteed to win, assuming he plays optimally. And a state is a losing state if the current player loses. He has no chance of winning the game, assuming that the opponent plays optimally. We can determine which states are winning states and which are losing states using the following recursive definition. All terminal states are losing states. From every winning state leads at least one move to a losing state. And from each losing state, all moves lead to a winning state. The first rule is pretty obvious. If you are on a terminal state, you automatically lose. The other two rules fit nicely together. If you are in a winning state, you can directly perform a move such that the opponent ends up on a losing state. And from the losing state, he can only perform a move such that you end up on a winning state again. Let's try this with Mario and Luigi's game. I've already determined the winning and losing states. The piles with 0, 1, 5 and 6 blocks are the losing states. The other ones are winning states. Now Mario starts with a pile of 9 blocks. This is a winning state. So Mario will win if he plays optimally. He can either remove 2 or 3 piles. Since he wants Luigi to have a losing state, he removes 3 blocks. Now it's Luigi's turn. Since he is on a losing state, his move doesn't matter. Regardless of whether he removes 2 or 3 blocks, Mario ends up on a winning state. He removes 2. Now Mario will again choose a move such that Luigi ends up on a losing state. So he chooses to remove 3 blocks. And Luigi ends up with a pile with only one block and loses the game. As we've seen, there is an optimal strategy for the game. And because the starting state was a winning state, the first player wins using the strategy. Now to the computation. Which states are losing and winning states? We simply compute them with bottom-up dynamic programming. We iterate over all states and determine if we can reach an L state from this state. If we can reach one, the current state is a winning state. Otherwise, it is a losing state. 
So we start with the pile with no blocks. We can't perform any move from this state, so this is a losing state. The same thing goes for the pile with one block. But now it gets interesting. From the pile with two blocks, we can reach a losing state by removing two blocks, so this is a winning state. From the pile with three blocks, we can even reach two losing states, so this is also a winning state. And from the pile with four blocks, we can reach one losing state, therefore this is also a winning state. From the pile with five blocks, we can only reach winning states, therefore this is a losing state. The same thing goes for the pile with six blocks. And we repeat the process for the piles with seven, eight, and nine blocks. Notice that there is a pattern in the sequence of winning and losing states. There are two losing states, followed by three winning states, and this pattern will repeat. So the losing states are the states that yield 0 or 1 as a reminder of the division, number of blocks divided by 5. It's quite obvious that there has to be a pattern in the sequence. Since the moves are identical for each state, remove 2 or remove 3. This doesn't have to be the case in a more complicated game, however. The moves are allowed to differ for each state. So today you learned that there always exists an optimal strategy for impartial combinatorial games. And you can generate it by computing the winning and losing states of the game. In the next tutorial I will introduce you to the Sprague Grundy theorem. The Sprague Grundy theorem will allow you to combine multiple games. For instance you can play with multiple piles instead of only one. And with this theorem you can compute the number for each pile and combine the numbers to determine if a state is a winning or a losing state. Additionally, I made a video about me solving and coding a game theory problem. It's more complicated than the block game we discussed in this video, but the ideas are pretty much identical. You can click on the link to see it. Thanks for watching.